Hello, friends. Welcome you all for this interactive session with a great, great personality, CA Dr. Anil Lamba. It's a great session that we are going to have today, interactive session. So let me just first introduce the guest that we have with us. Dr. Anil Lamba is a chartered accountant, but over the years, his role has been transformed to the multiple areas beyond the chartered accountancy. Typically, you will think of a chartered accountant looking after the taxation or auditing work or other issues. But he has transformed to all together different areas. So he holds a doctorate in taxation also, which is typical from a chartered accountancy. But what he has done beyond that is very few chartered accountants have done it. I'll say across the world. It is not only in India, but I don't find any comparable chartered accountant in India at his level. The, he's gone into the training right from the very beginning. And he has been an international trainer on various issues on finance for the public, which does not understand the finance. So he coined, he was the first one to coin the program finance for non-finance managers. And initially it used to be that uh, Taj in Pune and then La Meridian and the various other places. He has taken it online now, Anil Lamba on finance. He, beyond this, he has been a best-selling author. One of the injury or hospitalization, rather, I'll say, brought him to the, his passion for writing. And he started off writing the books. The first book that he wrote has sold more than a million copies. I don't know the exact count also at present. Romancing with the balance sheet. And then that journey of writing has continued. He has authored multiple books right from romancing with the balance sheet, flirting with the stocks, financial affairs for a common man, and I on the bottom line. He's an international trainer. Uh, he's an entrepreneur also. He runs a chain of cafes where they've done a lot of automation. Maybe they could have thought of a, a dist social distancing and other things. He runs an, uh, a restaurant in Pune City. Uh, I forgot the name of that mall, Anil, sir. Uh, Phoenix Mall, huh? Phoenix Mall, Autobahn uh, is a restaurant where the entire food delivery and everything is automated. There is no touch of a waiter or anyone else. You order it onto the uh, tablet and the food will be delivered to you. And this was way before coronavirus, way before COVID. So it is not that they were aware about the COVID. We, oh, it's wonderful to have uh, Anil Lamba sir with us uh, today. So what we are planning is a Q&A kind of thing some basic questions uh, or that I could think of from the public at large point of view, I'll take up. And then I'll request audience also to ask a questions, but at the end, don't interrupt in between. So good evening, Adil, sir. It has been a great time. We are meeting again on this particular platform. We never thought that we'll be meeting and having such kind of sessions. But we are understanding the uh, benefit of technology now. Okay. So let's get started. Majority of those people who are watching are youngsters right now. They're in the teenagers of 20, 18 to about 23, 24. So one of the book that you have authored, Financial Affairs of Common Man. When I went through that particular book, uh, Frank, I have gone through all your books. Uh, I am fortunate enough to get two of the books signed by you only. And I have not paid for them. <laughs> but when I was going to the financial affairs of common man, I found out that the great, great importance that you have placed on the importance of saving at an early age. So would you like to elaborate on how the savings would play and in the financial affairs of common man, especially this youngster crowd? Yes, that's a good point you've taken up because uh, from a personal finance point of view, many of my other books are from a corporate or a business perspective. But from a personal finance point of view, I've always felt one of the finest habits one can inculcate is to start the savings habit early. People realize they start very late. In the beginning, one is tempted. You newly start earning. You want to spend money on several things that you want, which is fine. That's what you're earning for. But if you start the savings habit early, it gives you a tremendous edge over many others. One has to never forget that one fine day you will retire, you will stop earning. And you have to provide for the time where the income stops coming. Because 
two things people do not appreciate enough. Uh, one is they don't understand the power of compounding. Many people don't understand. CA students, of course, do understand. And second is the damaging power of inflation. Inflation can be killing. I mean, people can save a lifetime thinking this will take care of me post-retirement. And by the time you retire, the inflation has taken away so much of purchasing power that your lifetime saving may last you for six months after retirement, unless you have been sensible about it. Now, the biggest advantage of starting early is the, like I said, the power of compounding. And power of compounding you don't recognize in five or 10 years. The real yeah. power of compounding is felt if your savings last for, say, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. Now, for you to be able to save and reap the benefits of that, if you started in your 20s, then your skin is about 40 to 45 years. By the time you're 60, 65, you retire. So savings beginning early, there are many charts CA students must have seen. Those who started saving at age 20 versus those who started at 30. The amount saved is much, much higher at 30. But the amount that you have at a particular age is much lower still. So you've all seen those charts. So I feel, yes, I have emphasized on that because I think that was a message I wanted to give out to people. And this message is apt for the youngsters. And as is often said, don't, don't, don't save what is left after spending. Spend what is left after saving it is a good mantra to, to keep in mind, I think. Perfect. <laughs> so taking it forward, let's say you would rightly stress about the power of compounding. So would you like uh, to recommend to the youngsters a uh, portfolio allocation that they should have at this particular age? Because typically an Indian household family simply says that you should not try to borrow, you should not try to create a leverage, you should not try to invest in equity stocks and other things. So with the savings that they, you create, if I want to channelize those savings and create a good wealth over a period of time, would you recommend investing in equity stocks or something like index investing or a passive investing, which our country is yet to understand it a big time? Like if I look at the uh, developed nations in the US, passive index investing has grown up like anything. In India, still it is at an ascent stages. So what will be your advice with regards to the portfolio or the manner or modes for making investment of those savings? First of all, an understanding about equity is so important because if you don't, your money is lying in places like bank fixed deposits. They don't even cover inflation. So if you have to beat inflation, the only way that you can keep pace with inflation and see that by the time you reach retirement age, you have a good enough amount to take care of you. The only way to do that, I think, is through the equity market, real estate and equity. But now real estate is down in the dumps for so many years and probably low for God, how many more years. So to me, the only option that appears is equity right now. And index funds, as you mentioned, are the ones that keep pace with the growth in stock market. But whether they are passive equity index investment or aggressive, CA students, I would like them to go aggressive. Passive is good for the others who don't understand finance, who don't understand the functioning of equity markets and so on. But yes, a significant portion of your money invested in equity. I am not advising uh, day trading, not that I'm against it. But right now we are talking about people who are doing something else, who are practicing chartered accountants, who are employed chartered accountants, who are doing several other things. And you want to invest your money in a meaningful fashion. I think equity should have a substantial, take a substantial portion of your money that you save should go into that. Okay. So taking it forward for understanding of these investments and other things, financial literacy is must. And uh, we have uh, the best person about the financial literacy. Dr. Anil Lamba has a mission where they want to train a billion people on to financial literacy. And they are tied up with the uh, as an experimental project in the Pune Municipal Corporation, and they tried to bring the financial literacy. But now here we are trying to address an audience which is, uh, let's say, somewhat literate in the finance. What will be your advice to these youngsters about the financial literacy or whatever kind of a mis-selling that happens in the financial markets? A classic example that we have recently: Yes Bank sold additional Tier One bonds to the uh, 
various senior citizens and senior citizens fall fail prey to those bonds no, not knowing that these bonds are carrying a risk so what is the importance of a financial literacy that you place in the life of a common man who doesn't understand the finance and even a person who understands the finance i think people who understand finance have an important responsibility to spread the message to those who do not understand which is why my movement of creating a financially intelligent india otherwise can you see the tragedy somebody who's been saving painstakingly saving out of limited income and then one fine day making a blunder like you just mentioned investing in certain thing which you should not have but it sounded so attractive the salesman who come to you painted such a rosy picture and because of your inability to understand or distinguish uh, you lose all your life saving i don't think there can be a bigger tragedy than that so these ca students and ca aspirants that we have i think they have a very very big responsibility ahead of them i would like to invite you to be part of my movement our our attempt to train a billion indians is the method we are using is we'll be mobilizing about a million volunteers idea is a million volunteers will be able to train a billion indians the process has started lot of work has to be done we have been doing on a on a in our own capacity we've been doing quite a bit but much more needs to be done and who better as volunteer than trained people and that to train by abhishek so people coming out of abhishek's <laughs> training are definitely <laughs> without doubt one of the amongst the finest people we have so you are most welcome please join the movement whenever you can no hurry we are yes. here this project for the rest of my life you may join 5 years later 10 years later we hopefully we'll still this but uh, i think your question was what advice to them you are the people who have the ability to understand ability to distinguish between uh, i hope so between genuine and frauds definitely not you can distinguish because these frauds are very very intelligent people and the best they are very intelligent yes can get uh, trapped into what they sell but wherever possible we must you know i remember abhishek long long back uh, you know now we have irda hmm. insurance regulatory development authority but good old days this wasn't there lic was the only insurance company in the country at that time lic had about 5 lakh agents out on the field sent into the field without a single day training <laughs> oh god there was a very senior lic person i knew who had worked in india for many years then gone to us seen how things are there found it you know why can't we be like that in india professional and so on one day he retired came to india and he set up an institute hmm. called cert if cert okay. stood for institute trans financial services education research and training and he used to do these irda type of courses and i used to Uh, do some sessions with him on uh, income tax and uh, uh, insurance i remember those days you talk to these guys what kind of policies sell they say you know the most popular policy is money back policy which is money the back. worst endowment <laughs> endowment typical endowment it's still okay but money back is probably the worst but the thing <laughs> is the agents get the highest commission in that Correct. and it's not that they are defrauding they themselves don't know what is better so it's such a vicious cycle they are paid the maximum commission so anybody who asks they will try and sell this and the basic literacy you need over here is in an insurance policy if you are planning to get the money in your own lifetime you have defeated the objective of insurance Correct. so the moment you take a policy where the fellow says 5 year later you'll get so much money 10 year later you... so it becomes a savings instrument and i don't know a worse saving than insurance what gives Perfect. insurance the edge is the insurance part not the investment part incidentally it's, it's an insure investment also maybe a substandard one but the combination gives it the power but no agent will tell the uh, the, the client these things so i think the cas have a very very important role and one of the things i used to do as a practicing ca i made sure i had no agency of anybody so that my advice to my client is not biased otherwise just because i get commission there is no difference between that agent and you as a ca many cas take up agencies themselves i think the moment you have a vested interest your advice will not be unbiased so this is one of the things i would like to leave you with when you start you must make sure your complete responsibility is the welfare of your client anything which interferes with that is i think unethical and one should not indulge in that 
मतलब परफेक्ट आवर थॉट्स आर परफेक्टली मैचिंग इन द क्लासरूम आई गिव एनालॉजी यू मिक्स टी विद वोडका एंड देन यू ट्राई टू ड्रिंक इट दैट कॉम्बिनेशन इज अ डेंजरस सो इंश्योरेंस इंश्योरेंस एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट इज अ डेंजरस कॉम्बिनेशन यू वांट अ इंश्योरेंस टेक अ टर्म इंश्योरेंस यू वांट अ इन्वेस्टमेंट गो फॉर म्यूचुअल फंड और गो फॉर अदर एनी अदर एसेट क्लास इन्वेस्टमेंट शुड बी प्योर इन्वेस्टमेंट यू विल प्रोबब्ली गेट बेटर ऑफ बोथ इन द प्रोसेस यस परफेक्ट परफेक्ट सो दैट इज व्हाट दिस सो द स्टूडेंट्स वर वाचिंग द key takeaway that he tried to mention is you try to be the torch bearer and try to train further people and associate with dr anil lamba in financial literacy for all and the second one is very important try to understand the financial products before you try to commit anything for any person you should try to deep dive into financial product because there is a lot of mis selling that has happened whether it is a unit linked insurance plan or uh, yes banks are tier capital uh, additional tier capital one bonds there are so many instruments which are mis sold in our country so try to understand those uh, insurance products an example of those days yes now come out with a scheme a pension plan do we have the time abhishek yes I yes can... we have enough time we will not bother about the issues no more commitment today my lectures are over today's lectures are over okay, okay. now that we mentioned this thought came to me there used to be a plan called jeevan dhara yes i think uh, government had recommended to lic or advice or ordered lic that you know government employees get pension private people do not get pension you come out with a pension plan <laughs> now frankly lic has no business to come out with pension plan their job is life insurance not pension Correct. but because the government ordered they came out there was a plan called jeevan dhara these courses that were running with this gentleman ex lic person i told you now here you ask again the people coming to the courses how is jeevan dhara doing there's an amazingly well now what was jeevan dhara abhishek you touched 30 yes i have touched 35 30, 30, 35 okay. i will imagine you imagine you are 30 and imagine i am a salesman for jeevan dhara i am an lic yes. agent and i come to you and i say abhishek here is a policy pension plan you are 30 today take the plan age 55 you can choose 55 onwards whenever you will start getting a pension so abhishek give me 10000 rupees per annum premium hmm. and age 55 now all of you listening please you also can give your answers if you want at age 55 lic will start giving you a monthly pension so i used to tell them now imagine i am a salesman 10000 rupees per annum you are giving me over 25 years you gave 2 lakh 50000 lic will give you 2000 rupees per month from age 55 onwards and on death let's say your family members will get a lump sum of 5 lakhs that was called a give amount gross insurable value element okay. now you ask the people how many of you are interested many people said i am paying 10000 per annum i am getting 2000 per month so 24000 per annum and i paid 2 lakh 50000 i will get 5 lakhs let's say 50% hands will go up the remaining you ask why are you not buying they say no not good enough they say what is not good enough 2000 is too little okay i'll give you 3000 per how many of you are interested more hands will say okay now i am interested some more are still stubborn they say i'll give you 5000 per then more hands will go up some people said no 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 that 5 lakhs is too little i said okay i'll give you 7 1/2 lakhs soon i would have almost everybody saying if i was a salesman i would have sold that many policies to the whole class the actual scheme abhishek was hmm. you lic said you pay 10000 rupees per annum age 55 onwards we will give you 10000 rupees per month oh my god and on death the family will get a give amount of 12 lakhs now these are all lic people as a how many of you what kind of policy this is this is a fantastic policy and my answer was guys fool others if you want at least don't fool yourself this is such a horrible policy don't touch it so why now this was these were the days abhishek where the there was a doc, instrument called indira vikas patra where money could okay. double in 5 yes. years so there were many options where in 5 years things other things were there atc instruments correct, correct. now i said instead of doing this let's say now we pay a price for the lethargy of picking up a paper and a pen and doing some calculation ourselves i said supposing instead of giving to lic 
you put this 10000 rupees in indira vikas fund assuming it carries on 5 years down the line 10000 will become 20 now this this money is blocked for 25 years mind you because pension will start at age 55 first year 10000 after 5 years will become 20 after 10 years will become 40 after 15 will become 80 After twenty will become one sixty. After twenty five will become three lakh twenty thousand. This is the first year's ten thousand. Then second year's ten thousand. It will be close to three twenty. Third year ten thousand. Total at up the amount came to some seventy eighty lakhs at age fifty five. Now at now you reach fifty five. Now go and put it in a normal bank FD. You so probably you probably get five lakhs rupees. And LIC was giving you ten thousand. My point let was, huh? Let me tell you the similar thing happened to me. I mean, when I became a chartered accountant, I know I got a good marks, but in terms of calculations, another thing, this financial literacy was not there. I mean, you were not writing books those days. So, I have a similar kind of pension policy with me, which was sold by a chartered accountant only, who was a teacher. <laughs> Who had taught me? He had experience of twenty-four years. He told me that is the first and the last insurance policy that I bought. When I understood it, I said that boss, I went a disaster. It is not that the returns are not good. Returns are seven percent. If it can happen to you, what must be happening to the poor guys who don't understand? Correct. So correct. The responsibility we have. This educate. is a very important point. Educate. We as a chartered accountant, once we understand the concept, we must try to educate. Since not that particular day, even on a social level. Correct. Correct. Social level also. So since that particular day, I have tried to teach XIRR how to calculate a IRR of insurance policy or a mutual fund or a stock return with reference to date. I have tried to teach it to so many students that at least whenever they go on to buy insurance policy, they will calculate the IRR returns and they will come to know that the policies are not useless. Whatever you are saying was basically IRR. So uh, nice input on that particular part. So turning on to another book that you have written, uh, I on the bottom line. these majority of the youngsters they are in the era of a startup so they see the valuation that a zomato gets uh, zomato gets or swiggy gets or maybe uber or maybe the we work all all these companies the valuations that they get the, the startups are em- completely valued on the basis of top line which is sales but person like you or a chartered accountant will really look at the bottom line so can you highlight how much is the importance of a bottom line in an organization than looking at a top line because majority of these kids are looking at sales oh your sales is so much so sales multiplied by something is your valuation so how much is the, what is the importance of bottom line how difficult is it to get top line if somebody is giving a product for 10000 you say i'll give you 5000 the entire top line will shift to you isn't it top Correct. line cannot be the end top line is a means and the end is to have a decent bottom line so if you continue focusing on top line at the cost of bottom line and the startups the typical example they will give will be of google and flipkarts and so on what they don't understand is these guys have godfathers sitting behind them with huge amounts of money with faith in put in them that you go ahead you do this we are there to support you everyone doesn't have you read about one success story but behind one success story there are 10000 failures about which no newspaper has written about and those failures are precisely because these people thought i am here for the valuation game how long can you last how will people put in money in your company unless they can see a bottom line unless they can see light at the end of the tunnel so unless you are such a long term player that i have come to change the whole culture of india i'll will become a walmart will close the corner banya and therefore it will take me 15 15 years for habit to change and till then i will keep pumping in money to support it you can't happen and most of these don't have such godfathers behind them you need to come out of the red and into black very very soon it's very easy to say you're suffering a loss loss means you are earning maybe 1 lakh rupees you're spending 2 lakh rupees how, how can you do it unless you own a unlimited source of money so Perfect. one of the biggest mistakes these startups make is the focus is too much on top line they think it is valuation driven which is in a way right it is valuation driven but what if you don't get an investor for a while you should not go bankrupt in the process and if you can have a positive bottom line then it's a sustainable business if you don't find an investor today you continue your business you'll be able to survive because you are a profit making company sooner or later some investor will find it worthwhile investing in you 
so in the long term only such companies will survive where either the bottom line is positive or in the near future you know you are headed towards a positive bottom line and but your focus has to be there even if you make losses losses by design are still okay hmm. because i know that at the end of this period i'll start making a profit but if you don't see profit happening for god knows how many years then i don't think that is a sustainable business model at all okay perfectly and matlab explain to you we must have a look at the bottom line because traditionally you say that the bottom line is what is really matter but over a period of time the traditional thinking of looking at the bottom line was changed to look at the top line but in my opinion that bottom line will remain to be the sacrosanct line for years to come the top line may be just for few years but beyond a point of time the bottom line is going to matter coupled with cash flow cash flow man coupled with the cash flow generation correct because bottom line can be uh, manipulated your okay. profits are basically uh, ca- capable of being manipulated your mentions said, i've said successful companies stand on two pillars pillar number 1 ability to generate profit pillar number 2 ability to manage cash flow and this is not the role of chartered accountant this hmm. is the responsibility of everybody in the company in fact the cas are not in the picture when the profits are being generated they they come they are they do post mortem so finance management not on the part of finance people but on the part of so called non finance people who are the real finance people in any organization that drives me to the next point which is very logical you have been a creator of this concept the first concept in the entire world financially intelligent organization every student and everyone must understand that the finance is not the role of only a chartered accountant or the finance function Dr Anil Lamba has coined a wonderful concept called as a financially intelligent organization so can you just throw the more light on a financially intelligent organization what are the characteristics or what could be the identifying features and how should the all support roles whether it is a production or marketing team or hr team how should all come together to build that wonderful organization and create a wealth for the investors you see first of all we just discussed business is about bottom line now when will bottom line be positive bottom line is a result of intent intelligent purchasing intelligent production intelligent selling intelligent hr policies it's a combination of this so what i've always said is every individual's actions within the company have the power to either benefit the bottom line or hurt the bottom line every action of every individual first of all when does an organization make profit organization makes a profit when those people within the organization whose actions are having a positive impact on the bottom line collectively speaking when their actions are stronger than those who are hurting it net result is profit and when those who are hurting it is stronger than those who are benefiting net result is loss now imagine an organization that understands this and makes financial literacy they spread financial literacy across everybody so each one's action the financially intelligent end result is bottom line is very strong so i have always felt we call the finance department the finance department unfortunately is 90% accountancy it should be called accounts department <laughs> so the belief in companies is that production happens in production department sales happens in sales department finance happens in finance department my point is the finance guys are not in the picture when finance management is happening or when finance mismanagement is happening consequently abhishek even if a company has the finest finance department in the world a company can be guilty of financial mismanagement why because the real finance people were not there when things were happening those guys will do post mortem later on and say if the so called non finance people had done financially intelligent things these guys will say we made a profit if they have not done so guys will be made a loss now what happens there for is companies realize sooner or later through the hard way that everybody must understand finance and which is why my courses which we do across the world because people have realized it's not that you have to sell this concept the concept has been felt they have made mistakes they are paying a price then they realize i need to learn finance. but i still feel who do they teach they teach handful of people these key people should be trained in finance my point is if i if somebody attends a program of mine i say what i have done is i have now created a financially intelligent individual but what we need is a financially intelligent organization 
so we coined this term called fio financially intelligent organization now when will an organization be financially intelligent so we need to go into why are they not intelligent two things number one literacy is lacking so we say okay we will teach but if you want to become an fio if you want to be stamped as an fio then literacy will have to be given to everybody that means if your company has 10000 employees we will teach 10000 employees you can selectively say train these 500 people but literacy is no use unless supported by timely and frequent information so in fio concept we have two pronged approach number one we go into systems we go into accounting systems we go into reporting systems where necessary we recommend tweaking the system we study the reports that are being generated we design customized ms reports for them we will also tell them with what frequency the report should be generated we will also identify who should be the recipient of which report otherwise companies either don't generate reports if they generate they don't come out on time if they come out on time they don't reach the right person if they reach the right person the fellow doesn't know what to do with it once it comes to him so once you have given literacy to the entire organization and you make sure the right report generated at the right time reaches the right person and when it reaches him the fellow knows how to read understand interpret and take action based on that then we will certify this is now a financially intelligent organization abhishek this is like an iso certificate in finance the first of its perfect. kind in the world perfect my hope and dream is in the coming years bankers will not give a loan if you don't if you do, if you're not fio a shareholder will not buy your shares if you're not fio because if a company is not financially intelligent then it's a matter of time before it gets into trouble and when a company gets into trouble the owner is not the only one hurt in fact the owner is hurt the least the bankers lose money the employees lose jobs the vendors lose money the shareholders lose money it is in the mutual interest of everybody that an organization is fio so this is another very interesting concept lots to be done lots to be done okay that's okay. that's wonderful insight into a financially intelligent organization a chartered accountant can only think of at a different different levels where the role of the finance should be brought in because we understand the figure world of figures completely you have been training the people who are from non finance background for last almost 25 30 years now what has been your experience matlab can literally the persons across the organization who is an engineer or a doctor or other persons can be taught about the finance about this you know, funny thing abhishek very interesting people have spent lifetime saying i am a non finance person now if you spent a lifetime saying you are a non finance person when i sit down and start telling you you are the finance person the resistance will be great right no i am not a finance person amazingly it takes less than 30 minutes in a training program for them to have a 180 degree transformation from saying i am a non finance person to saying how the hell could i ever think i am a non finance person so acceptance of this is immediate because it's logical you're not talking them saying something which is not take my word for it it will happen it's not something esoteric it is something which makes so much sense but the thing is why didn't it strike me earlier is is the thought that comes to them i have met so many entrepreneurs managing directors industry owners who say anil i wish i had done this 20 years back 25 years back my life would have been different so there is tremendous need for this it is an it's an idea to which the resistance is minimal because it makes logical sense and when companies start accepting this idea i have transformations coming company would have shut down but now suddenly they take a turn around and they start making profits so there such amazing cases i have seen and i can't tell you what a satisfying activity this is for me it's a it's a it's a hobby turned passion turned full time activity i never dreamt in my life i'll ever be teaching when i got my first teaching assignment my first reaction was what i didn't become a ca to teach <laughs> you know the first and then you realize okay why not and then gradually it kept growing the more it grew the more i used to delegate work at my practice till one day i handed over my whole practice to my colleague and i said they went full time into this but it's been a Good. journey of great fun okay <laughs> now can you share some of the let's say problems that you faced during a chartered accountancy or your message to the young students who are doing the chartered accountancy course what will be your message to them 
God has been very, very kind. I used to enjoy my CA practice also. You know, I, I passed out and I set up shop day one. I started practicing on the first day. Not that I had a background, not that family connections were there, nothing. I was actually the least qualified. Not that we had learned enough also during our training period. It, to that extent. Everything I learned was on the job after starting. Only thing I used to do was I used to start my day very, very early. I used to end it very, very late. Start in the morning at 6.37, go on till 8.39. But not because somebody told me to work hard. I used to enjoy myself so much that at the end of the day, oh my God, I better go home now because I have to come back tomorrow. And those were the days where you start your own practice. You have a small little office. You are the pune. In the morning, you come and clean your office. You are the boss. You do everything. You even organize a cup of tea for your client when he comes. Hardly any clients. But I used to keep reminding myself there are people who go through struggle periods. When they are struggling, they are cribbing. Oh my God, things are so bad. And look, when they look back, they say, oh, what wonderful days they do were. I used to remind myself, I will enjoy the struggle days when they are happening, not in retrospect. So frankly, I enjoyed every minute of my day. Today also I enjoy, I don't feel I have worked a day in my life. Abhiki. So it is every minute is fun. You know, people get Monday morning blues. I used to get Saturday evening blues. Oh, tomorrow Sunday, what the hell do I do tomorrow? Couldn't wait for Monday morning to happen. So I think it has been a wonderful blessing. I wish this is the way it continues till the last day that you are one is doing. So, and one of the good things about CA practice is there is no retirement age, guys. You can yes. as fish. So you guys are doing a fantastic thing. And even though I don't practice anymore, I always tell everybody everything I have learned is from the CA course. It is probably the finest course. An Indian CA is probably the finest in the world. It gives you such a grounding now whether you continue practicing or do anything but the foundation you will get over here and when you're learning from people like abhishek abhishek you know the foundation that you will get is so amazing it will hold you in good stead throughout your lives perfect perfect <clears throat> so that is about a chartered accountancy because many people think that a chartered accountancy course over the period of time will take them through the lot of trouble and other things but it's important to come from your side that yes this course has helped you a lot now we will open house for some wonderful questions. There are some questions which have come up. So I'll just flash the questions on the screen and we'll take it across. There's a question from Harshal. What made you choose to author a book after the CA course or after doing everything? What? Harshal, I didn't, choose, I didn't choose to teach. I was invited to teach. By fluke, I took it on. When I took it on, I enjoyed it. So I did it. One confession is I think I'm a very, very lazy person. So when I say I, if I work 14, 18 hours a day, it's not because I'm a hard worker, only because it sounds like fun. If somebody, if you like cricket, if somebody says play cricket morning to evening, you'll play. If it felt like work, I probably would not have done. So having taught so much, I used to always feel I must take this knowledge to many more people because you teach, especially now we have online. When I started, you teach in a classroom. You are limited to the number of people who can fit within those four walls. So desire was, if these people can benefit, more can benefit. But being lazy by nature, I used to think writing is a very, very tough job. So I never really wrote a book. But one day, I got chicken pox, which probably I didn't get as a child. So I got it in a... <laughs> and chicken pox is something where I was absolutely fine. I, I didn't even have irritation. I knew they had those, some boils here and there, but not, not even irritating. But chicken pox is supposed to be contagious. So everyone was told, stay away, stay away. I had nothing to do. So because I had nothing to do, I started putting down, typing this, which we, what came out of it was this book called Romancing the Balance Sheet. So I did not choose to become an author. I did not choose to become a teacher. I actually did not even choose to become a chartered accountant. And I was <laughs> everybody was appearing for entrance exam. My brother said, you also appear. Everybody was going for classes. I didn't even go for classes that, for entrance. And then I also appeared for entrance. When I appeared for entrance, I passed. When I passed, so next thing is you have to do articles. When you do articles, you have to become a CA. So I think the whole life was kind of written for me. I didn't choose anything. But I'm so glad. I'm so glad. God has been kind. It has been excellent. So I wrote books. One book, because it became so popular, then I, now it's become a habit. So, doing that. so there is a wonderful question. 
uh, Anil sir, what is your view on SIPs and the mutual funds for the college going students? These are youngsters, so they think. Uh, should you... going students, if they have the money, I never had. But if you have the money, nothing better. We have already discussed the advantage of starting early. And if you want to start early, and we have also discussed the, the, the positives about equity market. So if you have the money and if you start an SIP and your equity linked, maybe SI, uh, mutual funds, then what better can you have? Of course, you should do it. There's another question. How can we be part of this, your movement? It would be a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Because it would be a blessing word hits the heart. Yes. We'll figure that out. You know, I need, I'll tell you what with help I need. It is it is a huge job. On our on an individual level, we keep doing. I also have a tie-up with Sakal where we go into interiors of Maharashtra, where I deliver in Marathi also. So on a personal level. But for this movement, what happens is, and now that things have changed from my original thought to the new one now, uh, I said this is a volunteer-driven activity. So first of all, you guys can become volunteers whenever you want to. But how will it work? So volunteers have to be told what to teach. And all volunteers won't be CAs. They could be anybody. So this can be volunteer could be a person with no financial background. So we have divided the target audience into six categories. You know, the lowest level employee within a company whom the company never spends money to train, the smallest possible businessman, the grocer, the banya, the uh, shopkeeper. Uh, the housewife for the lower middle class, who are the virtual finance managers of the house, but money is very limited. The NGOs, uh, the students, we want to teach them young. So school children and the generally underprivileged category. So what we are doing is we are inviting volunteers and I already have a few thousand volunteers enrolled. So the first thing, now suppose this is an online activity. You come on the site, which is not ready yet, but you come on the site site saying I want to volunteer. First question will be asked is which target audience would you like to reach out to? Because we don't expect to be, be, be people to leave work and do this as a social activity. A corporate executive will say, I don't mind training my workers in my factory. A, a mother might say, I don't mind going once in a while to schools where my kids are studying and teach them. You know, uh, 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 somebody might say on a Sunday, I will gather the drivers in my locality and I will, you know, anybody. So without taxing you, without making you go out of your way, a social worker might say, I'll go to slums. So first question is, who would you like to address? Once you choose your target audience, we will give you access to that content. That content hopefully will be in textual form, will be in e-learning form, will be in video form. And it will have to be in every Indian language because our volunteer could be anywhere, need not speak English, need not speak Marathi, could be from any language. So the biggest job I have in front of me right now is to create content. Content is very simple. It's not complicated. But I want to involve more people in the content because they should get ownership of this project. So which is what I was talking to you also, Abhijit. Correct, correct. We discussed once, Yes. Once content has been created and once then we translate it to, so huge work is here. Creation of content, making it into e-learning, making it into videos, translating into various languages. Once this is ready at the back end, then we will open the floodgates for volunteers to come in. Volunteer will be given access to the content. They may down. All we need from them is a verbal assurance that they will train somebody free. We will give them freely all the resources we have. They can go through it, they can study it, they can download it, photocopy, whatever they wish to. We expect the volunteer to do two things. We hope they will train somebody free of cost and we hope they will mobilize more volunteers. So 10,000 will become 100,000, 100,000 will become a million eventually. And then hopefully the dream of training a billion Indians will be realized. Achieved. So, so Meghna, whenever you are ready, we'll yes. be hopefully ready once this is done. But anyone who wants to get in now on the content creation part, you are most welcome. But as a volunteer, there's a wonderful doubt by Ayush. He says that in a chartered accountancy course, the best path for an aspiring entrepreneur, or is there any other path that you should follow for being an entrepreneur? I will not say that. I will not say that. But chartered accountancy is one of the best ways of doing it. There are others also. I can't say others are less than this. But personally, I'm a CA. I haven't experienced anything else. And I feel everything I have today, I have learned from the Chartered Accountancy course. And you are already pursuing. So rest assured, you are on the right track. 
but I'm not saying that's necessarily the best. My son, who's 20, he's probably a fantastic entrepreneur, started, runs three businesses, started two, three years back, even in 10th standard he did. And he's, he's taken a break from uh, formal education. But I see his contemporaries and I think he is head and shoulders above them in his knowledge and his understanding in his maturity and everything. So, so, so there are multiple, there are many paths which lead to God. You choose which path you want to take. All paths, so long as you have a head on your shoulders, a rational method head on your shoulders. There's another student, he says that, do you see the future for Indian startups after this global pandemic? The many of people were thinking that the world is going to come to an end. I don't, really don't know from where the people have this thinking. New opportunities are opening up. Always be on the lookout. Always try and find the silver lining to every cloud. People look at the clouds. Please look at the silver lining. I mean, in this one and one one and a half month, both of us have discovered so many opportunities. Both of us have done better than before in this uh, two months of lockdown. I have realized I used to do courses in physically. I used to travel all over the world. But then you are having people from that geography. Now, suddenly we find because of this, we were forced into online. And in online, we have students from across the world. There is no limit. There is no geographical boundary. And the costs are less. So you find opportunities in every. So definitely there is scope. And Indians, my experience is, I may be biased, but are intelligence-wise higher than others, maturity-wise higher than others. Plus, they have the ability of Jugaad to with them. I think <laughs> they will probably do better under any circumstances. I think we go long on the multiple issues. Our uh, thinking lines match are matching on multiple issues. So there is a wonderful doubt uh, how the financial segments are important in understanding in a business enterprise. Look, I have a problem here. These financial chartered accountants are the culprits over here. I never did it during my entire practice, but do not help anybody make manipulated statements. Financial statements are very important provided they are genuine. There are so many entrepreneurs who have never made a genuine balance sheet. Now, what's the point of teaching him how to read a balance sheet when the balance sheet itself is bogus? It is made for income tax. It is made for banks. What's the point? So I remember in the days when I could not afford it. If anyone would offer me a handsome amount to sign, I should say no, even when I couldn't afford it. Forget it. When one can afford to say no, it's great. So try and bring ethics into this profession. I think people who do the most disservice to our wonderful profession is and in the process, sometimes we get a bad name. Are the ones who help, who think my job as a CA is to help people how to evade taxes, how to don't do that. In fact, you're not doing a service to your client. You're not doing a service to nation for sure. You're also not doing a service to your client. I've always maintained any attempt at saving tax is more expensive than the payment of tax. Because the consequences of that, that the money that you can't. So the biggest cancer in the economy is black money. Hopefully, much of it is going down post GST, post all these things and so on. So I think you have a very, very responsible uh, duty in front of you. Once you become, uphold the ethics, folks, at any cost. Please understand, as a CA, you have many opportunities of making money. You don't have to make it the wrong way. You don't have to make it the unethical way. Uphold the ethics. Bring back the respect the chartered accountancy had. In the last few years, it has lost some respect. Which, which bothers me a lot. It hurts me a lot. So please, you are the wonderful people. You are the future of this profession. And definitely this profession has huge scope. I completely agree on this particular point. Over the years, there are some miscreants who have entered into the profession and who are tarnishing the entire profession. Right. Now, there is. Do you think that the 21st century will be the India century, or will it be just the political uh, gambit from <laughs> Prime yes. Minister? No, no, hundred percent. Irrespective, notwithstanding, I'm not supporting any political party. I'm saying, notwithstanding politicians, the coming hundred years belong to it. Our time has come. Little ups and downs will be there, but eventually, I think this is India's century. So, there's another one. Uh... What are the important concepts for a personal finance and a wealth creation that you should try to focus? Just a few pointers he wants. A very long answer it might take, but yeah. start early. <laughs> Don't start ignore early. equity markets and so on. Make sure your investments beat inflation. Otherwise, gold. Don't go into things like gold, etc., where you're only at best hedging against inflation. Beat inflation, and for that, when the time is right, maybe real estate. Otherwise, equity and stock market one that will take you. 
rest for safety reasons for a balanced portfolio put little bit here and there. have you lost me abhishek or no 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 my... yeah it's there it, it is there okay, okay so these are the things to be yeah so oh, the other one he is saying typically a personal question what challenges you faced the journey towards a chartered accountancy shubham i have been fortunate i have never been that extra hard worker i know ca students study for 20 20 hours i don't think i have ever studied for more than at the peak 6 8 hours a day that is also too too long have a balanced approach you know abhishek so many people in ca exams scare you also They, I mean, they scare I used you. To go to other than our main content, but I remember now I was a taxation specialist, C group. Now I went for the exam. This fellow sitting in front of me turned around. Did you do this? I said no. Did you read this? I said no. Did you read that guide? Something? I said no. Yeah, impossible. You will clear. Now they give you so much psychological. Any case, I passed out in that uh, that first attempt itself. Fellow did not become here for the next twelve years. So I am saying, don't let others bog you down. Have a balanced approach. When you study, study from the point of view of understanding the subject in and out. Forget you are going to give exams. Forget what people tell you. Refer to this guide. Read that guide. Not important at all. Refer to the notes he has given you. I think that itself would be sufficient. Don't go beyond that. But make sure you have understood the subject. Don't mug up anything. If you understood the subject, so then it, you don't care what question will be asked and what way it will be asked. So, Shubham, I have been lucky. I have been God has been kind. There is a wonderful question, Anil sir. Do you think that the important uh, important role of a chartered accountant will get changed in the world of artificial intelligence and machine learning? Basically, wants to say, will the chartered accountant be re remain relevant in the era of this artificial intelligence and machine learning? You see, chartered accountant as an accountant may not become remain relevant. In our days, we used to sit and write accounts ourselves. Now, as it is machine take over, so accountants have now to make balance sheets also. Some of them, not a chartered accountant, but the other accountants. So, as an accountant, your role may come down. But CA is such a broad-based course. You have learned so many things. You understand company law. You understand economics. You understand so many things that the CA's relevance cannot do. In fact, relevance will probably go up. But your role as an accountant may go down because machines will take over artificial evaluation also. But they can generate MIS. Interpretation you still have to do, even though artificial intelligence might take over much of it. I see your point. Your question is very, very relevant. But I don't think the CAs can go out of uh, the relevance of CAs will not go down. Rest assured, you have chosen a wonderful course, this course. But be open to changing your path as opportunities arise. Just because you become a chartered accountant doesn't mean you have to be either a practicing CA doing accounting, income tax, and so on. Or you are in the finance department for company. No, sir. You can set up your industry tomorrow. You can get into investment banking. I mean, in fact, the field is so vast for a CA that keep your options open. Don't let it be rigid. There is one personal question in this busy schedule. Do you find a time towards personal things or family? How do you manage it? Tremendous, tremendous, <laughs> tremendous. I we we love holidays for the world. So we are definitely we've been for. Years together, winter and summer, we've been out always as a family. Doesn't matter where. My work is such it takes me traveling everywhere. So whenever I'm going to an exotic place, my wife accompanies me there also. <laughs> Plus my work is such that I don't have to sit in. Uh, in my CA practice, long back I stopped sitting there full day. Now when I am in town, when I'm not traveling, and now it looks like I won't travel for a long time, I go to office only till lunch time. I realize there's nothing I can do at uh, I do in office which I can't do at home. And when I'm at home, you're around family. So I, I but I don't believe in that. People talk about work-life balance. I I don't believe in that because I think life is work. Work is life. When you have to work, you work 24 hours. Work for 20 days at a time, and then for 10 days you sit and go the hall with your family for a holiday. That is my belief. I'm not saying you follow that. But I've always I don't think we have ever refused a client who says, "Can you do on a Sunday?" We said, "Of course." Somebody says, "Can you travel to this end of the world?" We said, "Yes." We've gone to Africa. We've gone to Russia. We've gone. So I've never ever said no to any client, provided other things are matching. It doesn't matter time of the day. It doesn't matter day of the week. It doesn't matter how many days at a stretch. 
but then you do get sufficient time to also spend time with your family members oh this is a wonderful question last uh, few questions we'll take up uh in the last due to the, during this corona virus period the biggest growth india has seen is in the number of retail investors and number of traders trying to enter the national stock exchange so this young student he is saying sir looking at the uh, people crazy about a derivative instrument do you think that will it really affect the value investing in the coming future because number of derivative traders or intraday traders in the uh, this corona virus period has increased substantially so what do you recommend to these youngsters entering into these instruments or avoiding them no 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 derivative is one more instrument it's a wonderful hedging instrument it's a, it's handled sensibly it's a very nice thing why should you stay away from it don't put everything into that don't convert it into a speculative kind of a game but derivative instruments are it's a vast word i don't know how you are interpreting derivative don't look at it in a very narrow way anything derived from a base instrument is a derivative so derivatives can be of multiple ways and there are many which are wonderful which will help you has the risks and of course you should use that but sensibly don't become and let it become an obsession and don't convert it into a speculative game don't go beyond your means of course now oh, this is a wonderful question sir do you think that the blockchain is going to be the next big thing in the finance and which is going to affect yeah i must confess i don't understand i'm little technologically challenged to some extent but yes from whatever i have read it looks like this is the next big thing but it was touted to be the next big thing a few years back in the meantime nothing much has happened <laughs> i've heard about two three years back dubai is the first country in the world to convert the entire government to blockchain but i don't think anything has happened and because i don't understand technology too much i'm not in a position to comment but from the learned people what i've heard it looks like this could be the next big thing a typical political controversial question your views on the economic package that government of india came up with will it really be helpful for india so would you like to take that question or avoid it no but i am not impressed with the package impressed like, correct so let me yeah. just pick up some good questions uh there are some questions which are asking as if there is some solution like what should you do for becoming a chartered accountant within the period of 22 years there is no some recipe here <laughs> no you are the person with that answer <laughs> correct 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 <laughs> ha so that is a blockchain okay there is one wonderful question now this is typical personal question that is asking again to you if you write a book how do you find a publisher and market it <laughs> you know you must be getting bored of listening this from me but i have been very ex- exceptionally lucky in this also my first this is the biggest pain for a writer i must admit the first writing a book which can be a tedious job and number 2 then if you don't find a publisher i know the best books in the world today are the ones who say you know my book was rejected 180 times 150 times such stories also come about and that's scary in my case fortunately you know uh, as i said earlier on i am lazy so book i would not write but i found it easy to make videos so we had a series of videos called figure out the world of figures and cnbc used to sell my videos they are still in the market so they used to always tell me write a book and i used to always resist so when this chicken pox happened and i wrote the book so fortunately for me my publisher was ready but i was So when I wrote the book, I picked up the phone and told them, "You've been telling me write a book. I wrote a book." After that, then because the book became popular, then Harper took it over. Harper is world number two. My personal finance book is published by Penguin, which is world number one. My flirting with stocks is published by Westland, which is an Amazon company, which I think is potential world number one. But no credit goes to me. So it happened to me. But I fully see your point, Nupur. If you are a potential writer. i understand that this can be a biggest area of concern if you don't find a publisher on time it can be very frustrating and it's the chicken and egg story you never written a book before first time if you these publishers you you have to make sure they are chasing you you should not be chasing them because if you chase them they act very pricey because they receive multiple manuscripts per day and not their fault also so they are in a commanding position so it can be a dicey thing i agree with this is one typical one coming from a typical indian family sir we understand uh, new financial products but still 
public or the family members understand a traditional product how to how do you get motivated and inspired in such a scenario and try to convince your family members about uh, innovative products i think if you can present why you are you know you can't just say innovative so buy it unless you can prove why it is better and any product which is better i'm sure if if you like i said if i sit with in front of you and sell you a jeevan dhara policy and i tell you you know pay me 10000 per per annum i'll pay you 5000 per month i'll pay you so much i'm convincing you with facts and numbers so if you can convince somebody why it makes sense of course there will be no resistance but if you just tell somebody stop your old thing go move to the new thing and everybody has that inertia to new ideas especially the elder pe- elderly people so but if you can prove it to them why by moving it's a profitable uh, step it will ultimately make sense i don't think it's difficult to come we'll take up this last one any untouched area in your opinion that needs to be integrated with the skills financial skill sets of a chartered accountant what areas you think you should be brought in <laughs> to the close to the we are all the same profession i must tell you one of the thing that used to bother me the most is amongst the most boring looking people amongst the most <laughs> unattractively dressed people among thickest glasses i used to always say if i'm passing by a conference room inside if i see a bunch of most boring looking people i know it's a ca conference going on so <laughs> and an mba who according to me caliber wise is not even 5% of a chartered accountant sometime goes and commands better terms why because he knows how to dress well he knows how to tie a tie he knows how to speak so i think the skill set that you need and which institute has started taking efforts already please develop the soft skills please develop the speaking abilities please know how to dress well and uh, present yourself well that that is half the battle you know similar if i take an analogy of a book uh, there's a famous phrase that say you know don't judge a book by the cover so when we were designing in my case all the book designing we do ourselves i say what the hell of course people will judge. how will they judge you if you're standing in a bookshop have you read the whole book to know how good the book is they will judge you by the cover otherwise they won't buy if they won't buy how will they know what is inside so first the cover has to be attractive and then you got to make sure when they read the reading is even better than the cover so your cover has to be good folks people will judge you first you know people judge somebody in the first i think 30 seconds or something if the sales person to buy or not to buy from you they decide in 30 seconds actually apparently they decide in 3 seconds and the next 27 seconds they take to reinforce what they decided in the first 3 seconds now if you have to take a decision about how good or bad a person is in about 30 seconds you imagine it's going to be only based on other thing not your real value what you have inside they will come to know after sitting with you for hours and hours and hours so i think these skills if you take efforts to arm yourself with it will definitely hold you in good stead throughout your life uh thank you anil sir for those wonderful words and it was a great great inspirational session for the kids they would have understood lot of new issues there are almost about uh, 3000 views that have already come up so far so the kids would have really enjoyed this i really thank you for uh, finding out a time and let's hope that we catch up soon on different project that we have to carry out abhishek so nice of you it's i'd love to interact with my own professional brethren and guys anything you need from me any time reach out to abhishek and he will pass on the message to me would love to if in any way i can be of help it will give me the greatest yes. pleasure yes thank you sir thank you bye 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 bye